Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Gem Serpentine Dream. I figured I'd show something a little different. Uh, while I'm still waiting for my ball python eggs, uh, just a couple of side projects. Got a little trio of leopard geckos here. Have some, I uh, actually have six eggs in the incubator, and there's actually uh, looks like a couple more hidden in here I need to dig out. But just kind of a little side project. You know, I love animals and reptiles, and so, of course, I don't just have ball pythons. I was going to clean their cage out, and pretty big good time to go ahead and just shoot a quick little video. Nope, oh, keep trying to dig around. I guess we'll just watch her for a minute, see what she's doing. Maybe she's trying to hide from me. <laughs> or lay an egg. <laughs> Yeah, she finally climbed out. I guess we'll uh, we can gather these eggs up here. I think it's just the two. Yep. Yeah, well, we'll see how those do. All right, and here are some blue tongue skinks. I have three of those as well. They're northern blue tongues. Uh, these are Maruk. I've been getting them kind of one by one. They're really hard to tell if they're males or females. Um, so, at the moment, I believe I have three females. What are the odds in that? So, whenever I do finally get a male, uh, he'll be very busy. I figure I'd end up getting a bunch of males, but like I said, they're hard to sex, so even when people sell them, they're not sure what they are. But these are the blue tongues. They'll have a little bit of different variation in color and pattern. But nonetheless, very, very cool. Of course, this isn't where they stay. I just plopped on this aquarium here just to kind of get a shot of all three of them together. Because the uh, blue tongues don't really care to be housed together. So, they all have their own enclosures. All right. And here's the last of my oddball stuff. These are Western hog noses. Um, they're both the anac they're both anacondas. Um, it's a phase of, of western hog noses. So when bred together, uh, they can produce what's called a superconda. I got a cute little face. Yeah, believe it or not, uh, the big one is the female. The small one is the male. They are the same age, and um, I bought them about the same time. And uh, she actually laid seven eggs. I wasn't even expecting them yet this year. Uh, so hopefully he got the job done. Not sure they're not like ball pythons. They don't lock up for a day or two. So hopefully they did. But uh, yeah, they're really neat. The little belly pattern. A little curved nose. They like to burrow. Well, they say they like to burrow. I keep them in a substrate and they actually end up moving the substrate out of the way and putting all the substrate in the middle of the tub and then laying around it. So, they don't really hide too much. The thing about them is they'll, you go to get them out, they'll hiss at you and like mock strike. They don't actually bite you. Um, just to say, leave me alone. But, it's pretty cool. They're pretty neat. They can be picky eaters at times once you get them, uh, you know, from hatchlings. Once you get them swished over, they're not too bad. You can tell the male, he kind of just eats when he wants to. I guess he watches his figure, but he'll eat, uh, he'll eat every third or fourth feeding. He's just, he just never wants to eat much. But you can tell by looking at her, she doesn't really pass up a meal. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Um, I'm still waiting for my ball python eggs to, uh, 
to be laid. So, in the meantime, I uh, hope you enjoyed the uh, rest of the animals. All right. I got a big girl soaking here just real quick. I um, actually wanted to show a quick cut of the uh, incubator and some of the eggs in it. So stay tuned for that. And uh, again, thanks for watching. All right, guys, real quick, here's a look inside the incubator. Um, here are some of the gecko eggs. Four in each container. Uh, that counts the two that I just recently pulled out from the other tub. And then here's the uh, hognose eggs. Kind of rough looking eggs. Uh, like I said, I hope they're fertilized and they, uh, you know, they make it through okay. Uh, says her first clutch. And I really wasn't expecting anything from her this year. So we'll see how that does. Now I've had questions about my incubator setup since I'm here. I could show that real quick. Uh, as far as my tubs go, I just use shoebox, you know, plastic shoeboxes. Um, then I just use river rock. Uh, you can clean it, rinse it out, boil it, whatever you want to do to it. You reuse it every time. Uh, it never has to be thrown out. Uh, just buy a couple big bags and good to go. Um, and I just use this uh, light diffuser, cut the size on top. And I fill water to where it's just kind of just a little over touching the bottom of the light diffuser so there's no water on top. Uh, if you look at this one down here you can kind of kind of see the water level just touches the light diffuser. And last year out of all my ball python clutches um, I had no eggs go bad due to mold or anything like that. I only have one not ever come out of the egg. Uh, it just never formed. And then I have one that was born uh, not quite right it's a little bit special so I'm still I'm still assist feeding him um, and then for the top I just use glass uh, I got this uh, quarter inch glass I cut the size for the tubs uh, from a local glass shop it makes a real nice sill don't worry about saran wrap nothing like that it's more expensive but then again it's not something I'm throwing away it's something I'm reusing you know every time um, so it's definitely worth it in my opinion